I'm Kenji Ota from Tokyo uh, Institute of Technology. Uh, my students, colleagues, and I are uh, working on a hypersheet experiment. So today I'm going to talk about the acid summer evolution from the mineral physics point of view. Okay, as you know, the Earth experienced uh, various uh, events uh, related to the uh, summer evolution, the, for example, the accuration and the co-formation at the very early uh, stage. Is I lost the cost. Okay. No problem. Okay, so, and then the solidification of magma ocean, and birth and growth of the inner core, and throughout the uh, ASUS, uh, ASUS history, and the core and the mantle uh, moved and uh, drive the plate tectonics. And uh, here I showed the, an example uh, of the big event in uh, our history, the birth of the, uh, birth of the inner core and the uh, change in the geodynamo, the magnetic, uh, <coughs> geomagnetic field. And uh, before the birth of the inner core, the, <coughs> the Earth's outer core, outer core uh, mainly composed of the rigid iron alloy, uh, have to uh, drive the, have to uh, generate its magnetic field uh, without the help of the compositional uh, convection uh, caused by the solidification of the inner core. And uh, this event uh, <coughs> uh, put the sound record on a natural uh, rock and the minerals, uh, such as the power geomagnetism. Uh, this is the very uh, latest uh, recent result of the geomagnet uh, <coughs> uh, geomagnetism. And the uh, particle axis showed the age, and the uh, <coughs> horizontal uh, particle axis showed the uh, field strengths. Uh, so that this study shows the reduction of the field strengths and they show the minimum at around the 0.5 giga years uh, ago and then increase. So the, they consider this uh, change, uh, secret change in the geomagnetic field is highly uh, related uh, with the Birth of the inner core. So, uh, from this uh, study, the CMB heat flow requires around the 0.5 uh, watt per uh, square meter. So this means that if we uh, if we could constrain the heat flux from CMB, the we could put some constraints on the uh, timing of the event uh, in the acid summer evolution. And uh, yeah, we, and uh, in addition to the uh, such event, and uh, there are many, many uh, summer events, summer interaction and the summer co evolution in the earth's core and the mantle and the between the as, uh, between the core mantle, uh, between the mantle and the core, and this uh, the predominant driving force uh, showing uh, I, that I show uh, the slide here and the previous slide is the heat inside the core, uh, heat inside the earth. So let me check the heat budget. Uh, heat budget is estimates in the earth. So the total surface heat flow is estimated to be the 46 plus minus 3 terawatts. So we need the 
So we want to know the contribution, uh, each contribution, the amount of each contribution. So the, how much the, from the mantle cooling, how much is core cooling, and how much uh, from the radiogenic heat decay, the radiogenic heat production. But uh, as you see, they, there are large uncertainty in the estimate of the mantle and core cooling. So how uh, we can determine the heat flow from the core? So this ASUS core mantle boundary is the massive the summer boundary layer, and uh, there is no uh, material exchange because of the large uh, density uh, difference between mantle and the core. So. According to uh, Fourier's law, the, if we know the summer conductivity, of, sub, summer conductivity kappa, and uh, summer gradient of the core, top of core, or bottom of mantle, the, we can estimate the amount of the core current. Okay, <clears throat> and our group. And in the recent years, our group uh, is trying to determine the summer conductivity of mantle and summer conductivity of core uh, to constrain the amount of core cooling. And today, uh, I will show you the, our results uh, of the high, pressure, high temperature measurements of the summer conductivity of mantle materials here. And the method is the high pressure experiment, and uh, we uh, usually use the some, uh, diamond ambient cell, uh, as shown in the left side of this slide. And uh, we employed some optical uh, measurement technique, uh, <coughs> and uh, we determine the pressure, composition, and temperature dependence of the summer conductivity of mantle minerals. So first, uh, I'd like to uh, review the mineralogy in the ASUS uh, mantle. So the left side is good. So the <coughs> in the upper mantle, the paleotite uh, in, uh, is uh, consists of uh, the olivine, granite, and some pyroxenes, and uh, <laughs> With increasing depth, the are being uh, transformed to water air wing and uh, at the 660, uh, it decomposed into the MGSL3 perovskite, uh, which uh, has been named to him, named Bridgmanite, and ferropericris, the solid solution of the MGO and FEO, and some uh, host. Uh, uh, the calcium host in the past lower mantle is calcium perovskite, and they, at the end of the last year, the, these minerals were uh, discovered in the natural diamond, and, and therefore the, these uh, minerals has been named the Dave Mawite. Dave Mawite. And this mineral proportion is based on the priority composition uh, the, on the base of, uh, on the pyrolytic composition, the richmanite shows uh, are, are around the 80 boron percent and uh, less than uh, 20 boron percent for pyrolytic and uh, around 7 boron percent of the malite. And the uh, richmanite undergoes phosphorovskite at the base of the as lower mantle condition. This is the basic mineralogy in the lower Asus lower mantle. And the recent uh, mineral physics studies based on the sound velocity measurements uh, suggest the lower mantle uh, has a more silica rich composition relative to uh, pyrolite. So the some group uh, suggest the 
Richmond enriched lower mantle composition. This is the current situation. So here I show the, uh, our method to uh, determine the thermal conductivity of minerals under high pressure conditions, high, high pressure and high temperature conditions. Uh, thermal conductivity is a function of the density and the uh, isobaric uh, heat capacity and uh, thermal diffusivity. And the thermal diffusivity uh, can be calculated from the sample thickness, uh, square of sample thickness over the heat diffusion times through the sample. So here, the, we loaded the sample Okay. Here, uh, we wrote the sample uh, in the diamond dummy cell and uh, compressed to the pressure of interest. And uh, we focused on the probe laser, uh, usually the green laser, and uh, we monitor the intensity of the reflected laser here. And uh, I hit the sample at the another side by uh, by the one pulse, and the temperature increase by this one pulse, it's, it's around the five Kelvin. So the applied heat diffused to this direction, and uh, here the sample was coated by the metal, and the reflectivity of metal is, is the uh, depend on the temperature. So if the applied heat reached here, the intensity of the reflected laser change. So we determine the time, time scale, uh, from the applied heat to the uh, reach the another side, which uh, corresponds to the heat diffusion time. And recently, the, we uh, have some uh, technical development on this technique to uh, apply uh, more laser or to uh, heat the sample stably. So in this system, we can determine the summer conductivity of minerals at the high pressure and the high temperature conditions. And this is raw data, so here the at the time zero that we've applied heat, and this uh, signal shows the temperature change at the another side, uh, monitored by the intensity of the laser. So the heat applied and heat diffuse to the another side of the sample. And uh, this curve will be uh, some of the diffusion time here. And after this measurement, we recover the sample and then uh, observe the sample thickness under the SEM or XCD. Uh, we can determine the sample thickness. And, the thickness. <coughs> and using some uh, reported uh, equation of state to calculate the density and the heat capacity, that we could get the summer conductivity. And uh, in a similar timing, in a similar timing, uh, there's some uh, independent group, independent group uh, developed another technique to, uh, for measuring the summer conductivity in situ at high pressure and high temperature condition. So after the 2000, 12 or something, the technology to measure the sum, uh, summer conductivity is highly uh, developed. So here I show the other technique to determine the summer conductivity. So upper one is the time domain summer reflectance technique. Now, this is very similar to ours, but uh, they heat the sample side of the heat and the uh, temperature detection is same. 
Uh, and because of this uh, setup, uh, the high temperature measurement is not feasible so far. But uh, yeah, of course, this technique can uh, measure the thermal conductivity uh, under high pressure up to 133 GPA, uh, almost the pressure of the Earth's core mantle boundary, but room temperature. And another technique developed by the Carnegie's group, the they uh, developed a pulse laser uh, transient heating technique that they uh, also, they pulse heated the sample uh, with much higher power, laser power. So they heat, uh, they uh, make the temperature gradient in the sample uh, greater than uh, 500K. And they detect the temperature change uh, by the uh, thermal radiation, uh, thermal radiometry. Uh, <coughs> and uh, this uh, technique uh, succeeded to measure the thermal conductivity thermal conductivity of pyrolite up to 124 GPA and uh, around 2500K. But as, you sh uh, as I show here, that this technique involves large uncertainty in temperature and the uh, low temperature measurement is not feasible uh, because they uh, use the thermal uh, pyrometry uh, or detection of the temperature. So advantage in the method is the is that the, we can determine the summer conductivity of sample with small temperature uncertainty in a wide PT range. Okay. So the before the such uh, technical developments, the summer conductivity of raw mantle minerals was poorly constrained, very poorly. Uh, for example, the Bridgmanite, the summer conductivity of it have been measured up to 26 GPA and 200, uh, 1200 K. And the Ferro up to 14 GPA and up to the 1300 K. And there is, there has been no data for Osprey and the Malite. And uh, now, the, uh, owing to some te techno technical developments by uh, some groups, uh, most of all low amount of measure mineral for, uh, for these minerals that we can have the summer conductivity data to the condition of the Earth's uh, lower mass mantle. Okay, so the, from this uh, situation before the 2011, the, we relied on the we relied on the prediction of this value. The summer conductivity CMB is around 10. Uh, this is uh, this is from the famous textbook, but uh, not based on uh, <coughs> based on the experimental data at the high pressure conditions. And uh, after and the I will show you the some results here. And uh, finally. <coughs> uh, I suggest the values of the summer conductive CMP uh, based on the current uh, experimental results. So the yeah we now we publish some papers regarding summer conductivity of raw mantle minerals. First, we determine the MGSIO3 system of the bridgmanite and the phosphorite to the pressure of the common boundary condition. And then we added some the impurities of the iron and the alumina into bridgmanite. And then we also determined the 
conductivity of the of a system uh, of the MGO and the FEO. And uh, more recently, the, we got the technique to determine the high temperature conductivity at the high pressure conditions. So we uh, could get the thermal conductivity of the ion bearing phosphorite at the high pressure and high temperature condition, as well as the Debmarite. So this is result, Richmanite. So the essence is the here. The this is the pressure response of the thermal conductivity of Richmanite. So the open circle shows the MgSiO3 ion and the aluminum free system. And the, if we added impurity of the iron and the aluminum, the conductivity uh, moderately decreases. And uh, we uh, determine the function of the <coughs> impurity content dependence of the thermal conductivity, uh, as shown here. But uh, unfortunately, the, uh, we have not perform the thermal conductivity measurement on the bridge monite at the high pressure and the high temperature condition. But that, yeah, this will be done soon. <coughs> and the post uh, yeah, uh, we determine this, uh, the conductivity of these minerals uh, as a function of the pressure here, here and the uh, function of the impurity, the ion content. So here, uh, ion free is here, the ion bearing system, ion bearing phosphorus. And we also determine the pressure, uh, temperature dependence of the summer conduct field of phosphorus. The, like the most of the insulator, the conductivity degrees with temperature. And here, the ferroperigrees, the, the what is important uh, for the system of the energy FO, FEO is the spin transition, spin transition. And uh, we discovered the spin transition of iron in the ferroperigrees uh, reduce its uh, conductivity. The, which uh, emphasized the importance of the measurements of the thermal conductivity in situ at the high pressure condition. And uh, we also show here the ion content dependence of the thermal conductivity. So using this relation, we can estimate the conductivity of this system uh, as a function of the ion content. And uh, this is a mm, fresh result uh, taken by my postdoc. Uh, they, uh, he uh, determined the conductivity of MgO and ferroperigrees uh, at the high pressure and the high temperature condition. And uh, yeah, he showed the conductivity of ferroperigrees with the uh, possible uh, composition in the assets lower mantle is around five, uh, which is the lower than that of the bridge mount. So the <coughs> conventional view of the conductivity, the conductivity of MGFEO is much higher than the bridge mount, so the uh, regardless of its small amount, but the Ferroperigrees would uh, play the important role in the uh, conductivity of the lower mantle, but uh, this denied such a uh, view. Okay, five minutes. Okay. And uh, finally, th this is the result of the Marwite uh, CASL3 post-proboscite, uh, CASL3 proboscite, so combination experiment 
and uh, of initial calculation, uh, we will uh, uh, we may uh, constrain on the conductivity of the moite at the condition of the as uh, common to boundary, and uh, surprisingly, the conductivity of the moite is the very similar. Uh, um, sorry, the conductivity of the moite is highest among the as lower mantle mineral. So using this, uh, this result, uh, we can determine the bulk summer conductivity of model rock at the condition of the uh, almost mantle. So upper one is the conductivity of pyrolytic mantle. The green one is the combination of bridge manner. Uh, green one is combination is phosphorus, kite, oh, no, sorry. Uh, green one shows the combination of the Bridgmanite ferroperigris and the Bonoite. And the uh, red shows the Bridgmanite and the ferroperigris. So owing to the highest conductivity of the Bonoite, the bulk conductivity slightly increased. Uh, and here, the bulk conduct, uh, calculated bulk conductivity of uh, pyrolytic mantle, uh, the in case the major mineral is phosphoroskite. And using this the summer conductivity constrained by the mineral physics study, experimental mineral physics study, the, we uh, try to calculate the temperature profile at the lower most mantle and they calculate the heat flux at the CMP. So the calculation is based on the heat diffusion uh, equation here. And uh, of course, we use the summer conductivity of lower mantle from our experimental result. And uh, we set, yeah, CMP temperature is 3,400 uh, Kelvin uh, based on the latest uh, result of the melting experiment of per peridotite. And uh, using, uh, and uh, yeah, we consider some, the geosum, the average geosum. The, in the, in case of average geosum, the beginning of the summer boundary layer is, uh, has been set to the 155 kilometer above CMP. <clears throat> and the hot geosum, and called a hot geosum, is uh, top uh, corresponds to the DW, conduct, uh, DW prime discontinuity on the central Pacific. And this is the result. The yellow line shows the calculated temperature gradient based on the average geosum and the conductivity of uh, perovskite rich uh, lower mantle. And the green one shows the uh, temperature profile uh, based on the average geosum and the pyrolytic composition. And so, yeah. The, we get very similar uh, summer structure between the uh, pyrite and the perovskite tight rock. So, which means the heat flux from core uh, is not sensitive to the composition of the earth's lower mantle. And here, uh, is some the more estimates of the heat flux from core. The, this is an estimate uh, in case of the average geosum and the hot geosum, cold geosum. So from this uh, calculation uh, simulation, the, we get the heat flow, heat flow from the core uh, as the 10.4 plus minus 2.5 terawatts. 
And uh, of course, uh, we can see some large regional variation in the QCMB. So the, here we apply this result into co-occurring 10.4. And this, such uh, high uh, value of the CMB heat flux uh, implies uh, Young inner core less than the, uh, one giga year and uh, up to a degree two megaprim generation based on the some mantle, uh, uh, mantle convection simulation. And uh, from this uh, box diagram, the mantle cooling uh, is uh, constrained to the 13.6. And uh, there's some uh, Estimate the heat flux by the hot room is, re, uh, is less than six terawatts, so the subducting subcooling uh, should be more than the 7.6. So the, our results uh, indicate a similar magnitude of quantum and mantle cooling, and the subjecting slop, uh, subducting slop efficiently cools. Uh, so now, now we are interested in the inference of cooling uh, history of slabs and uh, Bill Sueda, the students of mine, they is working on the conductivity measurements of the minerals, uh, including the some amount of the water. And uh, yeah, he did, uh, he found the water uh, efficiently, uh, eff effectively decrease its conductivity. So this is the last slide. The, so for the discussion at the end of this uh, session, the, there are yeah, still unconstrained uh, issues. Uh, to be discussed. Uh, so how much water do you slab contain and uh, how precise can we determine the mantle temperature? And uh, how precise can geoneutrino observation constrain the radiogenic heat? So yeah, I use here uh, 20.5 20, 20 from the talks in this symposium. So yeah, uh, I'm very interested in the how uh, precise uh, the scientist uh, constrain this value in the near future. Okay, so this is uh, my talk. So I uh, show the acknowledgments for to the former and the current uh, my students and some colleagues. Thank you very much.